Hi, Erwan from Motion VFX. In this tutorial, we will see how to composite explosion and 3D elements inside Apple Motion. Let's check the project. In Apple Motion, I've got a 4K empty project. First, I will import my video background. I will click on the import button, select my clip, and import. As you can see, the footage is very shaky with random camera's motion. Most of the time, this kind of footage asks a lot of time to track. But here, it will be very fast as I will use mTracker 3D. I will open the project pane and rename the group background. Then I will open the library. You will find mTracker 3D in the filters inside the motion VFX folder. You just have to drag mTracker 3D over your clip. mTracker 3D is a one-click solution which will be able to analyze the footage and extract the camera's motion. But before starting the track, we have to see if there is some elements that can perturbate the analysis. Here we have one man working. It will give bad information to mTracker 3D, so we need to remove him. I will use the B-spline tool. I will draw the mask around the man and adjust the shape. I will activate the auto keyframe mode in order to animate the shape. I will adjust the position at the first and last frame, then in the middle, and so on. in order to get a clean animation like this one. Okay, I will switch off the auto keyframe mode and inside the inspector, I will invert the mask to subtract the selection. Perfect. So now we are ready to start the analysis. You can launch the track inside the inspector or directly inside the viewer. The duration of the analysis depends on the length of the clip, the resolution of your footage, and your system configurations. For information, this analysis took around 2 minutes on my MacBook Pro. Now MTracker 3D is aware of the 3D scene of the shot, so I can add 3D reference point to help me for my composition. To add a 3D reference axis, you just have to click on the target icon, as you can see, the 3D axis is aware of the orientation of each pixel in the 3D space. I just want the depth information, so I will click on the Shift key to override the orientation information. I will click where I want to blow my explosion, like here. As you can see, my reference follows perfectly the footage now. So we are done with the video background, let's add an explosion. I will create a new group and name it Explosion. For the explosion, I will use a brand new pack from Motion VFX, MKaboom. MKaboom provides 90 4K high-end animations like blast, detonations, explosions, fire, and various elements. For this project, I will import the clip Blast 14. Depending on your project, you may see some white outlines around the explosion. This is due to the type of rendering of the alpha channel. To get the right anti-aliasing look, we need to tell Motion what to do and how to interpret the sequence. It's quite simple. You just have to go to the Media tab and select your source clip. In the inspector, we will modify the alpha type. By default, motion is guessing. In this case, motion select pre-multiply. So we need to change to straight. And we get the right result with a perfect transparency and anti-aliasing. Okay, let's move on. We have our explosions, but it's not following the background footage. We'll go to the library and need to import the mTracker 3D data to our project. So inside the favorites motions folder, you will find a 3D camera and a 3D group. I will bring both to the project. Inside the 3D group, you will find the lens distortion filter from mTracker 3D and the 3D group. 
This group is a depth reference we have chosen before, the one on the wall. So this group has the right 3D coordinates of the wall. Let's move our explosion inside this group and get the right position. I don't need my previous group, so I will delete it and rename the 3D group explosion. The 3D group acts like an anchor point to our clip, so we need to reset the position and the rotation of the clip to get the right coordinates. I will reduce the size of the explosion and I will move it at the right position. In order to keep the position of the anchor point, I will use the anchor point parameters and not the position. By using the anchor point parameters, the content will move but not the anchor point. Now the explosion sticks to the wall. I will quickly do some color correction to match the blast with the background. I will use the levels and the color balance filters. I will adjust the levels on each channels and add a little red tint in the shadows. Okay, that's nice, but I need to adjust the timing of the explosion as I don't want to start at the first frame. So by using the mini timeline, I will offset the timing just after the man turns his head. Now we need to mask the explosion as it should be behind the little wall. There are many ways to cover it, but here I will use mTracker 3D data to get it done in 2 seconds, maybe 3. First, I will draw a basic shape inside the 3D group. As it is far away and there is no big rotation, the shape is following perfectly, so no need to add any keyframes for all the sequence. Then I will select my blast footage and with a right click I will add an image mask. We just have to drag our shape inside the drop zone. And below I will invert the mask. So we have our explosion perfectly integrated with the video background now. And I will add a little touch of feather. I will rename the 3D group Blast. OK, let's add the helicopter. I will create a new group. As I've got a camera inside my project, the group is 3D by default. I would like a 2D group, so you can switch inside the inspector in the group tab or directly in the project pane by clicking on the icon. For the helicopter, we will use a 3D object. So I will use MO2 plugins from Motion VFX. You can find MO2 in the generators library in the Motion VFX folder. I will drag it inside the group. First thing first, we will import our helicopter. MO2 provides many 3D objects by default, like primitive. You can buy extra packs or extensions, but in this case, I will use the helicopter provided by default with MO2. I will reduce the size and rotate it. I will remove some post effects like distortions, dirt, and vignettes. Next, we will remove the background. To do so, we just have to go inside the scene settings and select background. Then we have to switch a type from gradient to alpha channel. Okay, that's great. We can see the background now, but the helicopter doesn't match very well with the background. We need to modify the lighting. To do so, we will play with the environment parameters. By modifying the environment map, it will affect the overall lighting of the helicopter. It's very easy to test various map and see directly the results. The city hall map match very well with the background. Let's skip this one. Of course, the helicopter is not affected by the camera's motion. To do so, we need to copy and paste the mTracker 3D data to MO2. So we just have to select the mTracker 3D filter and in the inspector tab, we have to click on the copy track blue button. In MO2, we'll click on the add button and we'll select the last option, mTracker 3D data. So now we will have inside MO2 the camera and the 3D group reference like before. We don't need anymore the default camera. I will delete it and replace it by the mTracker 3D camera. I will also move the 3D group and I will move the helicopter inside. 
I reset the XYZ position of the helicopter to get the right position with the right depth. Okay, so the helicopter matched perfectly with the video background. Let's animate it. So I will go to the first frame and offset the position on the left. I will add keyframes. Then I will move to the last frame of the clip and change the position. Okay, that's nice, but the two rotors are not rotating. As I'm in MO2, and as it is a 3D object from the MO2 library, we have many controls available. As you can see, we can have access to the main rotor, but also the tail rotor parameters. So I will animate both. I will start with the main and animate the Y rotation. So 360 degrees will do one circle. Let's go to 7200 degrees. I will display the animation curves. By default, we can see that the interpolation is Bezier. I will switch to linear as we don't want that the rotor speed slow down. We will do the same for the tail rotor. As the helicopter is far away, it seems darker. To correct it, in MO2, we have access to the texture parameters. Here, I will increase the brightness and the gamma parameters of the texture to get something less darker. Last detail, but an important one, we need to get the helicopter behind the man. To do so, I will create a new group and name it Mask Helicopter. And I will copy the background footage inside. We don't need the M tracker 3D filter, neither the B spline mask, so let's remove them. Second point, we don't want that the footage is affected by the camera motion. So we have to switch the group as a 2D group. Then we have to reset the XYZ position and rotation. Okay, so now we have the background over our composition. To get quickly the right cutout of the man, I will use a keyer filter. In the inspector, I will keep the default value of the filter and I will not select any color. We can switch the view to the key signal. As you can see, the sky is almost black, meaning transparent. In the inspector, I will use only the level's parameters. By moving the white to the left, I will increase the value to get a cleaner mask. But I will affect also the black, so we need to increase the black. At one point, it's very tricky to adjust the parameter inside this interface. So we need to open the levels parameters and use the sliders to be more accurate. Okay, perfect. Let's see the result. The key is nice, but we have an issue with the explosions as it seems behind the hill. This is normal as the white part is covering our background, so we need to restrict the mask. To do so, I will create a circle mask around the man. Like this. Okay, let's add the final piece, the missile. I will select the MO2 filter. So there is no missile by default, but we can use a bullet like this one to simulate the missile. I will quickly position and animate it.
Also, I will animate the visible parameter to display the missile only during the animation phase and not before and after. To create the acceleration of the missile, I will ease out the first two keyframes. I will switch back to the beauty mode to see the motion blur. And we are done. Let's render it. To polish the effect, I will add some color correction with the MFIM look filter. I will customize the effect and keep only the letterbox and the grain. I will add a lot, I can test some, but I will select the heat wave lot. Also, I will add a vignette effect. What is really nice with MK Boom is that you can quickly replace an explosion with a new one to create many versions of your effect with a professional result. To know more about MK Boom, one address motionvfx.com. And for more tutorials on MO2 and MTrackers 3D, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.